What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Frank kg 5 ahj We got a mix of the old school cans are back, but the new build bench here, and we're going to be having some fun. We're going to be talking about building a counterpoise. So let's get to it. A quick little bit before we start this video, links for everything I'm talking about are in the description. And um, go ahead and use tank at checkout. If you pick up anything at Giga Parts, it gets you double awards. Tank at checkout and um, let's go ahead and get into it. Let me go ahead and direct you to Great Fun Amateur Radio and the new Tank Radio Pint Glasses. These pint glasses are a limited time item. If you want a Tank Radio Pint Glass, head over there now and order yours because once the pre-order window is gone, there's going to be no more order chances. So go ahead, head over there now. Links in the description, links are popping up. And thank you for supporting Tank Radio. This is my solution for a non-intrusive way to play ham radio. Sometimes we go to parks and the um, park says we can't penetrate the ground with stakes. We can't lean our mass in a tree. We can't throw ropes in a tree. We've got to be freestanding and non-intrusive. And this is my solution for it. Let me just go ahead and explain. I am going to be using the skyhook solutions to mount my hamsticks and this is a metal uh, CNC um, part that you can mount hamsticks to however hamsticks are meant to be on cars and they use the car as the grounding point of the system well there's not a lot of grounding space to this so we're gonna have to build a counterpoise for it um, if you go ahead and head over to Tio's Ham Nuggets, we went ahead and did a live stream where we're talking about designing the counterpoise system, and now I'm going to be building it. So let's go ahead and let me show you what I'm thinking. So we got the skyhook, and then it comes out to the tripod, and we need a ground for this. So what we're going to be building is a little wire that connects to the metal part of the skyhook, and it's going to come out and go straight to the ground and then we are going to attach four wires one two three four and that is going to be our grounding system these wires are going to be 17 feet so that they should handle up to 40 meters more wire is not going to hurt the counterpoise it's just you're going to need more wire for the longer wavelengths of the band i am going to shoot for 40 meters because that's the the highest hamstick i have i have 40 i have 20 i have 15 or 17 and then i have a six meter so um so this should work across the board and I can't wait to build this. Let's go ahead and head over to the bench here. I'm going to kind of mock this up for you. We got the ham stick here, and then we got some nuts and bolts. It's going to connect to the opening there. And then um, I'm going to use a ring terminal to connect there. And then I'm going to put a simple plug here so I can disconnect and reconnect a longer um, cable that's going to drop all the way to the ground. Because I don't want the um, counterpoises coming out of here because they're just going to be kind of lazily draped. And I think that's going to look pretty bad. So from here, we're probably going to use a power pole, connect to a longer wire. And then we're going to have another short end extension on the bottom to another um, bolt and that's going to have four coming out of it ring terminals and that's going to be our counterpoise which this is going to be onto the ground and what project wouldn't be complete with a morning run to home depot because i realized i need more washers so now that i have everything i got my ring terminals i got some bigger ring terminals i got some smaller ring terminals and we're just going to start starting things together cutting wire and putting power poles to it let's just start with the bolt here i went ahead and got a 5 18 bolt because that seems to fit the nicest through this hole and i got a locking lug that we're going to use to torque everything down so it doesn't come apart got another washer for spacing and i did that because this bolt here has the rounded and i thought that'd just be a little nice just to have the rounded cover and makes it look a little aesthetically more pleasing but i needed a little bit more space for the um, tension locker to have uh, enough room to uh, torque everything down then we're going to have our ring terminal on the bottom to uh, drop to the ground let's just fit it up i like that idea i think that is beautiful there's not a lot of 
distance here that we're going to be needed to play with once we torque these down this is just going to be locked in and it's not going to go anywhere and this is going to be permanently attached and i love it so um, we're going to go ahead and cut a piece of wire now and we're going to use that piece of wire for like a little extension but it's going to have the larger ring on it i am going to go ahead and do the coffee and ham radio removing the insulator to make it easier to solder and they do that by heating it up yes and taking some tong or tweezers and just pull it out boom set it aside and now we just have the ring we're going to let that cool for a second and then we are going to pull out our power poles and get those crimped on oh yeah that did it where that's going that's going nowhere and we're going to do our stupid test. Now this test is uh, not that it's a stupid test. It's a test if I hooked it up right. Solid. <laughs> All right, second power pole crimp like so. And we'll do the same test again. <laughs> so we got two jumper extensions. And what we're going to connect it to, this is some scrap, just cable or wire, power wire. And I'm just using it for this i think that length oh i don't think that's long enough i wanted like a five feet that's not five feet that's not five feet at all oh well we'll use this and um if it's too short i can just always get another wire and put power poles on it so that's not going to be very hard so let's get back to it all right so we got power pole power pole power pole power pole I am just going to put black ends of all these because it's technically all ground and I just feel like that would be the right thing to do. It's going to piss me off later though when I go into here and I'm going to be out of all black ones. Where did all my black ones go? I gotta order more. And how I remember what end goes in which direction, I just look for the flat top here and then I turn the um, loop around to um, curve down and the flat top there. Flat top goes into flat top and just push it in. I just find it easier also to use some needle nose pliers just to help us push that down. All right, so what we have is one extension wire and two jumper cables. This jumper is gonna to connect to the bolt. Then we have the extension wire and then the extension wire is gonna to connect to our ground and it's just gonna be there. Then this will be all connected and it's going to be connected to radials. Let me just do the lug nugs and the ra radials. I know it's not fun at this part, but we're just cutting cable. I hope I have enough for two. I don't know how long the section is or how much I have left. Um, probably not. It's getting close. And not even. That's it. All right, well, we're going to just kind of have to wait for the next section of wire to come up and that should be delivered today however i am not going to be able to finish this today so i'm just going to keep on going and uh when i am available again we'll just jump to that and i'll have 17 feet of wire on both ends so that's going to be four wires i knew this is not going to be enough uh, i thought i'm going to get two pieces out of it it was only one i didn't know how much was here probably just jump to tomorrow Welcome back. It's been a bit since um, I was last up here and it was because um, I didn't have enough wire for the uh, counterpoise system. The wire that I did have was not long enough to do all of these strains. I was only enough long enough to do one. So I had to order some more wire and for some reason, I know I'm talking, not looking at the camera because I'm trying to find it. When I ordered the red wire from b and Tech Go, for some reason, it switched it to 50 foot when I tried to order 100 foot. And when I checked through the receipt, it said 50 foot. So I don't know what happened. So I went ahead and cut a couple of lengths out of this. And then I had to order another yellow for 100 feet. Well, I did yellow, so it's, I think it shows up more than red. Uh, let me go ahead and show you here. So here's the uh, wires that I cut and I also uh, went ahead and soldered the ring connector together. Um, yeah, I think the red just shows up less than the yellow. And I went ahead and did this without the camera because you all saw me cut and solder. We, we know how to do that kind of by now because I already showed you early in the video. But what I had and did is here 
is I cut two 17 foot yellows and then two 17 foot red wires. And the only difference is the color. And I went ahead and just bolted them together. And I put our little jumper splice on the nut also. I was wanting to then take this nut and put it onto this uh, winder here. I think Ham Radio Dude gave me. However, the hole here was a little bit too large for these washers. So I got to get new washers and I'll do that later. The final form. Here is the counterpoise section of the wires, uh, four uh, 17 foot cables uh, ran out at uh, different quadrants. Then we got the uh, jumper to the Anderson power pole, connect the Anderson power pole, that's gonna go to the ground. And the top of it is gonna go to the sky hook. I swapped out the sky hooks. This is gonna be my sky hook for the system. I'm putting the two on top of the uh, mast, but the sky hook itself is gonna then be connected to the wire and boom. All this is done. Just one final test. We're gonna touch the ground here to this here, get a beep, and then this there to that there. It's a beep. I think we're ready to go. We just gotta go outside and throw up an antenna and start tuning things. Just for fun, I went ahead and put everything inside this Explorer headset bag, cause it fits, has enough space and all, and uh, everything's stored together for this kit. And that makes everything I need to uh, set this up with this kit stored together. And I love that. I just need an adapter. So I probably need to buy more of the BNC to the UHF adapters. Always need a more adapters, right? Haha. <laughs> you got the sky hook here with the pod and now our new adapter extension. Yes. And now our new counterpoise. Got to figure this a little bit better. It is a mess already. Eek. Now we run them out. Bam. I can't believe it. I made a thing. The counterpoise uh, connections on the ground there. It runs up to the sky hook and that connects to the ham stick. Ah, oh, so cool, so cool, so cool. Now we just got to tune it. It's finally done. The ham stick is up and the system is going and I'm going to go ahead and filming and focusing and hitting buttons at the same time. Not a good thing. All right. It is a 1.2. On uh, 14.2, I think that is perfectly acceptable. Um, I am just going to go ahead and show you. We're going to go ahead and unhook the counterpoise system and see how that changes it. Okay, and tune again. It is 11. So that proves the counterpoise system is working. That proves that I can go ahead and use this as a non-intrusive system. And um, yes, sorry I didn't show you me tuning the hamstick, man. It's it's tedious and I'm not gonna put that on video. It's up and down, up and down, take it up, move it up, move it down, the little, little bits here, little bits there. But um, it's working, it's working. Uh, I got 20 meters going, I got another 40, and I got a couple others to tune. However, the system works. I just need to figure out how to travel all the hamsticks together now so they're like one kit. But um, awesome, awesome. Links for everything I had talked about in the description. And as always, uh, thank y'all for watching and uh, go forth and conquer.